Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Protective Life, Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, and University Kia. Good evening and welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. Bulldogs come up a little short yesterday, coach. The big news, though, it's the Hall of Fame game with Senior Day, Military Appreciation Day, and let us not forget High School and Community College Day here on the Hill. Lots of activity, coach. You've had to play a lot of games with a lot of distractions here at home. How are y'all able to overcome all of that? Well, I don't think we were able to overcome it, Ted. We lost the game. But uh, it's always good to be able to recognize um, other people that done great things, uh, whether it's the high schools or it's the alumni or it's the uh, Hall of Famers. Um, it's, always, it's always good to be able to acknowledge those guys. And, and that's, it's, oh, it's a great weekend for those people. And uh, we, we tried and had a good football game. Uh, we came up just a little short, though. It started out 17 down, 17-0, coach. We thought it was going to be that game. Xavier Langford gets injured. You go to Quincy Casey, quarterback, immediately he has a 12-play, 75-yard drive for a touchdown. Yeah, you know, Xavier hurt his thumb during the week mm -hmm. on his throwing hand. So he wasn't throwing very good at practice. And uh, then in the game, uh, the first two series, he got hit and then he got sacked and he kind of landed on that hand, mm -hmm. putting that hand down to protect himself. And he hurt it a lot more. So, um, and then we was in a position to where uh, it was already 14 zip at that point mm -hmm. when we got the ball back. So we said we're going to go with Quincy because we knew at that point uh, we got to throw the ball a lot to be able to come back and win the football game. And Xavier wasn't 100% healthy and able to throw the ball. So uh, we went with Quincy and uh, he let us right down on, a, I think, 12 play drive. 12 plays. And a touchdown and got us back in the game 17 to 7. And uh, we we actually played well from that point. We went on a 21 unanswered uh, right. scoring free and made it 21 to 17 and took the lead. Um, and then right before the half, a third and 15 play, they threw one down the middle to the tight end mm -hmm. that was covered. We had him covered like a blanket. He made, he just made a great catch yes. and then made a great run after it. Got him down in the red zone uh, inside the 10 and. They was able to punch it in and take the lead at halftime and kind of take a little bit of that momentum that we built back up um, when we scored 21 and answered. Um, but we still felt good. You know, we we blew a coverage that first touchdown alone. Boom, we blew a coverage. We didn't cover three, and we let the guy get behind us. Uh, and then we had the, the punt. And so we kind of felt like we gave them, we gave them those points. And uh, the defense was still playing solid. So we just felt if we can come out and get a score, take the lead back. Right. Uh, it's going to be a great finish, and we had a great chance to win the game. And uh, we came out, got, got off to a good start, got a pass down the middle field. Uh, CJ over the middle, and a uh, guy come up behind him and, and, and take the ball from him. And again, we about to score right there, you know. And it was a big play. It's a big play, momentum. And the key was, we uh, in the third quarter we had the ball three times, and we turned it over twice. Mm -hmm. CJ got stripped there, and then we threw an interception. And uh, and then they was able to score twice and 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 maybe lengthen the game was spread the, the margin of to uh, 42 to 21 and, uh, and then it was uphill battle from there and we was able to score again and get down to the uh, two yard line and one able to punch it in to cut it to one score game so um, got to take your hats off to Willie Simmons and Fam you number one team in the conference we battled them we had a great chance to win we had opportunities we just didn't take advantage of them. What does playing a game like that do for you for the rest of the season? Uh, we, just, we only have two games left. It just shows you that we got a lot of tests with 42. Our guys ain't going to quit no matter what the score is. We did the same thing against Jackson down 21 zero for seven minutes and was able to mount a comeback in that game also. So our guys ain't going to quit. Um, we're just a couple of plays away. You know, we got a good football team offensively, defensively. We got a, we got some work to do on special teams. But it's just which, which one or two plays uh, that's costing us uh, in the last couple of weeks. So mm. we got to get that cleaned up. We're right there, and uh, we'll, get it, we'll get it turned around. Coach, I know you wanted to say thank you to one of the – or two of the Hall of Famers that got inducted on Friday night to Patricia and Ronald McCaleb McIntosh, 
who've done a lot for your program and stood behind you, especially volleyball as well, folks, if you don't know. Ron's our stadium announcer here on the Hill, but you had some special words for him today. Yeah, I just want to thank them uh, for their blood, sweat, and tears, their unwavering support of not only this football team and me, but the whole athletic program. Um, they're, they're the most generous donors we probably have. They give every year and uh, just shows how much they care about athletics and and A&M, uh, the student body also. And uh, we just want to tell them thank you and we love you. Go Bulldogs. And when we come back, you'll get a chance to see some expanded highlights. Oh, I'm so thrilled about this because it's senior day. And folks, if you've never heard me say this, I'll tell you now. Those student athletes not only have to go to class, they have to go to practice. God forbid they get injured and have to go to treatment. Heaven forbid that they have to have surgery and then have rehabilitation. So, folks, every time someone suits up and wears Alabama A&M on their chest, please support them and give generously. When we come back, the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, on yesterday evening, Alabama A&M University honored the Athletic Hall of Fame class of 2023. Men's basketball player from 1998 to 2002, Mr. Desmond Cambridge. Men's basketball player from 1974 to 76, Mr. Homer Davis Jr. From women's track and field athlete from 1996 to 2001, Miss Lasanda Jones Easterling. Football player from 2007 to 2011, Frank Kerr. Volleyball player from 1986 to 1989, Angelia Martin. Men's basketball player from 02 to 2006, ladies and gentlemen, Obadiah or Obi Crowder and head coach for the football team from 2002 to 2013, Anthony Jones. Let's give a big bulldog applause to the athletic. Hall of Fame class of 2023. The Alabama A&M University Bulldog Brigade Alumni Association proudly presents a check for forty thousand dollars towards their goal of establishing an endowed scholarship. Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie, a guy that's privileged enough to sit here and coach. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Another one of our Hall of Famers, former head coach Anthony Jones, who is the second winningest coach in Alabama A&M history in percentage and number of wins. He gave you a great compliment, coach, when I interviewed him during the third quarter. He said your program is headed in the right direction. Yeah, you know, like I say, uh, the guys are playing well. They're playing hard. Uh, we just got to play a little bit smarter. We got to get our football IQ up a little bit. Uh, we got that three or four plays every game that's, uh, that's costing us that. And it's going to be four or five plays in every game that cost or win the football game or lose the football game for you. So we just got to, uh, you know, I tell the guys all the time, you never know when a big play is going to come your way. So we just got to be ready every play to play every play like it's our last play and uh, it's the biggest play of the game. And so we, we're right there. Uh, we got to finish out. Uh, these last two games with wins and stay over 500. And uh, if we can do that, you know, we've been here six years and we go and say we only had one, lo one losing season. So we got, to, we, got, we got to get to turn around these last two weeks and get that ship back turned around in the right direction because we don't just want winning seasons. We want to win championships. Amen to that, Coach. And, of course, looking at your statistics, I think you're at win number 98 in your career. Yeah, I have 98 wins. So the last two of this season, that means on Thursday night, our last game of the season, when it'll be on Thursday night, we hopefully will get a chance to celebrate Coach Maynard's 100th victory in his career. You've won a national championship, a conference championship. What you don't have that Coach Jones has is that he had one of his student athletes get inducted to the Hall of Fame the same night he did. What would that be like? Oh, man, I guess that's, that's really special, you know, because uh, you can't get in the Hall of Fame unless you got some good players. Mm -hmm. And I tell people that it's all the time. It's always about the players. Uh, all, all the great coaches had great quarterbacks and great players. And, um, you know, if you are lucky enough to be inducted to a Hall of Fame, it's not because of you. It's because of everybody else and all the help you mm -hmm. had. 
That's an excellent point, Coach. Good thought. Now let's return. It was Military Appreciation Day as well. As we're coming up on Veterans Day, we want to say thank you to our veterans. But more importantly, we like to say thank you to their families because they're without the families are without their spiritual leader in the household. Coach, you know something about that. Your wife has put up with you running out, running around the country, coaching football. It's the same thing. It, it really is. You know, uh, you know, behind every great man is a great woman. And uh, my wife is one. She's a perfect example of it. Uh, allowing me to uh, build this office and build these players, especially during the season, more than I'd be with her and my daughter. So um, it's just understanding, and, and I'm blessed to have a, a, a beautiful wife that understands and allow me to be able to coach this team the way I coach them. High school senior day, and leading back into what the university has done, had the largest freshman class ever in history. Enrollment is really up coach. People point to athletics as a reason that the students pick a university, but also we have another thing that pushes people along here to Alabama A&M University, and that's the Marching Maroon and White, and they showed up yesterday against the Marching 100 of Florida A&M, who haven't been in Huntsville since 1974. Wow, wow. Well, uh, you know, I, of course, I don't ever get to see the band because <laughs> we be in the halftime making adjustments, but uh, uh, I think our band probably held their own. And Coach Joe said the same thing. Yeah. He'd never seen the field yeah, for the yeah, first time. Yeah, I never seen the band. So uh, everybody always talking about the band. You see the band? No, I ain't see the band. Uh, I'll I be coaching. So, uh, but I, I'm, I was glad to see the marching 100, and I knew our band would show up too and, and put on a great form. So uh, performance. So it was it was great for the crowd, the people that showed up, uh, to be able to see the, both bands perform at halftime. There is some pressure now, Coach, because the game day experience has changed a bit. We've got more people coming. The schedule is intense here at home. Until yesterday, you were undefeated at home this season. That means a lot to you and your program. Yeah, yeah, we were trying to stay undefeated at home. Uh, we were 3-0 in the season and wanted to go to 4-0. And then, uh, of course, we got the last one on the Thursday night against Valley on national TV. And so uh, we still want to get that one and make it 4-1 uh, uh, at home. And we want to protect our home. You know, we want to make it tough in here. Um, and we had a great crowd yesterday, and they helped out a lot. Uh, we just wanted to pull it through, but we really appreciate uh, the crowd showing up because it means, it means a lot, and it makes a difference. And, of course, we'll be able to talk more about the Bulldogs' upcoming opponent, the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman University down in Daytona Beach, Florida. We get to go to the beach, but it's a business trip. Coach Maynard might just let us smell the water, but we won't get to touch it. When we come back, we'll have a very good conversation on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Donnell Maynard.
Welcome back to the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie. Here is the schedule upcoming for the Bulldogs. We play Saturday afternoon, 12 o'clock Central at Bethune-Cookman in Daytona Beach, Florida. It kicks off 1 o'clock there, but it's Central time here. That's 12 o'clock. Coach, we're in big-time college football. If you don't think about we're in big-time college football, this will be our third flight of the season. Y'all get some airline tickets. Coach, what does that mean for your program when you can move around the country like that? Well, you know, that's that's a recruiting tool. You know, we'll be able to tell recruits, look, we, we this is big-time football. That's why you come to A&M. You know, we, we, we fly. You know, we don't take those seven, eight-hour bus rides. We might take one. Sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. <laughs> We we don't do that, you know. We don't we gonna get up in the air, and get on that bird, yes, and get there and get back. Yes, sir. Um, you know this this is just like uh, FBS football, man. We 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 take it serious. We want our athletes to be healthy. We want them to have seats by themselves, and we don't want those long bus rides. So uh, sometimes we have to take a bus, but if we can, we're gonna get on that bird and we're gonna fly. And then when you fly to Bethune Cookman, coach, the preseason predictions have us about right where we're gonna end up finishing. But the big deal here, of course, is another conference victory, but another opportunity, to, as you said, to get to a winning season. Yeah, yeah, we got to uh, play in a good Bethune-Cookman team. Uh, they're not where they want to be. They got a new head football coach. So uh, he's trying to uh, implement his systems and uh, his style of play and get his guys on the same page and get his guys to buy in. So, uh, But they, they're, playing, they're playing hard. They're playing tough. A lot of good football games. Uh, so they're right there. And so we got to be ready to play this week. We've got to be sharp, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, if we can do that, uh, we got a good chance to win the game. And uh, that'll get us right where we need to be, put us in position to win the last game and be 500 and send these seniors out with a winning season. Let's end this, Coach, um, with a conversation about Senior Day. So we celebrate two types of seniors, I'm thinking. Those who have graduated and then those who have ended their eligibility. Because with the transfer portal, we have kids that have already graduated, they've had senior day, but they come here because they still have eligibility, and then you give them another senior day so they can leave with their jerseys and all of that. Coach, what is that like when you talk to a student athlete and recruiting them out of the portal now? Well, you know, what we do, we got one came from Howard, of course, Bryce Miller, and uh, he graduated there, so he probably walked on senior day last year. But this was his last game for us, so it's like a senior day for him here. Now, if we had somebody like Terrell Gardner right on. that graduated and walked last year, he didn't walk this year. Mm -hmm. So we don't let him walk twice <laughs> in one program. <laughs> but if you come from another program and you're a grad student, we'll let you walk. And Terrell Gardner, I have to say this, some of the student athletes, we really get to know them. Terrell did everything you asked him to do, Coach. Showed up on time, carried through his assignments, worked on scout team when he had to. And then when he got an opportunity, Coach, he did his thing. He did it. And what people forget is Terrell was a walk-on. Mm. Yeah, he came here as a walk-on. And uh, like you say, he started with scout team and just worked hard and kept working. And then he got a uh, half a scholarship and then he got a full scholarship. And that's what it's all about. Um, he was loyal to the program mm -hmm. uh, because we, we, we gave him a scholarship. Uh, he didn't jump in the portal and try to go. He could have went somewhere else this year. He didn't have to come back. Right. And so he came back and uh, we're really appreciative and uh, grateful for Terrell, all his hard blood, hard, uh, blood, sweat, and tears that he's given this program. And we want to say thank you, man. We love you. Go Bulldogs. Of course, Coach, that means the Bulldogs' next game against Bethune-Cookman, the Wildcats, on Saturday afternoon. Kickoff is scheduled for 12 o'clock p.m., but you can start hearing the pregame show at 11.30 p.m., 11.30 a.m., excuse me, on 90.9 FM WJAB with Marcus Sims and Janae McDowell. So for Coach Maynard, I'm Ted Dixie. Thank you all for watching the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Bulldog fans, thank you for joining us today for the Alabama a and University Football Review. Bulldog faithful, we encourage your support and participation. Until next time, go Bulldogs!